Hey guys, in this video today, I'm gonna to give you a new explanation of the law of attraction that you probably haven't heard before, but is probably gonna help you conceptualize it a little bit better so that you can get the maximum impact of it, so you can get the maximum benefit from it in your life. Now, if you're familiar with the law of attraction, maybe you've watched the movie The Secret or you've read something similar to that, then you've probably been approached with this concept as something that's pretty touchy-feely. It's kind of intangible. It's hard to wrap your mind around. And so, for me, as a very analytically-minded person, these explanations just didn't really resonate that well with me. I kind of had to figure out my own explanation to really dive into the details of this and say, okay, that makes sense. So, the method that I came up with for myself of conceptualizing this, I'm gonna share with you in this video. Now, just in case you haven't heard of Law of Attraction before, Law of Attraction is a belief that like attracts like, that your emotional state or your spiritual state attracts the reality of your current life. So if you expect good things and you believe that good things are coming to you, then good things come to you. And if you expect bad things and you believe that bad things are coming to you, then bad things come to you. Or to put it in a little bit more general terms, if you're feeling good, if your soul is in a high vibration, is in a happy state, then good things will come to you, or you will be attracted to good things, depending on how you look at it, uh, and vice versa. So if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling hateful, etc., etc., then you bring bad things towards you, or you, you magnetize yourself to bad things, or a bad state of reality. Therefore, if you want good things in your life, then you have to think positively, and you have to expect good things, and you have to feel good. So that's the super basic version, and I do believe in this completely, by the way, and so I'm gonna get into, in this video, I'm gonna get into how this fits into the structure of reality and how to conceptualize it so that you can take advantage of it. Okay, now the first thing to consider is that the world is made up of a bunch of parallel realities, and every person lives in his own parallel reality that is, is a different world from where everyone else lives, even though it exists at the same time. And I don't mean this in some sort of quantum physics way where there's a, an infinite number of, of alternate universes. I just mean that there are different experiences of life that every person experiences and different experiences of life that every person experiences during a different time of their life. So let me give you an example of reality as it pertains to people's career situation. For a certain segment of the population of the world, their reality is centered around crime and prison, right? There's a certain, so there are people in the world who, who's, the way they see it, their only way of making sustenance is through stealing or through dealing drugs and they're in and out of prison. They're Part of the time they're in prison, part of the time they're out on the street dealing drugs and then they go back to prison again. And that's the reality that they live in. Now, some people have a reality of working low-wage, entry-level jobs. So, these people are, you know, working at McDonald's or they're working in call centers uh, or they're working as waiters in restaurants, and they, they're kind of, their goal is, is fixed by their reality. They, this is the reality, the, the reality of low-wage jobs, where if they can, you know, switch jobs, or they can get a raise of 50 cents an hour, then they're happy, because that's all that's really available in their reality. And then there's a different reality for people who work in corporate world, people who work in an office environment, who work in a cubicle, who are making middle class salaries, uh, and so they see it as if they can get a, get a little bit of, if they can get a few thousand dollars a year as a, as a raise, or they can switch to a different company and, and get a raise that way, or maybe they can even get promoted to manager, right? That's the, the goal um, in this corporate reality. And then there's a reality of people who work at what I call a time for money business. So this is a business where you are doing work for people. You, you aren't working for a boss, but you are working for customers and you have to do work in order for them to pay you and they pay you based on how much work you do. So maybe you're a contractor of some sort, maybe you're a plumber, maybe uh, you're a doctor, maybe you're a lawyer and you get paid by the hour. You know, some of these obviously make more than others, uh, but that's another 
reality that people get stuck in is this time for money world. And then another reality is the lifestyle business world where you, uh, you have your own business, but your income is not tied to your time. So, so there are all these separate realities that we get stuck in and they're, they're very well insulated from each other. We don't really recognize the, the rea we recognize that the other realities exist, but it's not really real for us, right? If you're watching this video, probably you're not the type of person who's going in and out of prison, for example, yet you recognize that that reality does exist for some people. Okay, now if we can accept the fact that there are all of these different realities and we tend to get stuck in one reality and, and have a hard time seeing outside that, it begs the question, what determines in the first place which reality we happen to live in? And the answer to this question boils down to a very simple equation of the level of reality that you live in equals information plus motivation. Or put another way, success equals information plus motivation. So if you want to be able to do something, if you want to move to another reality, let's say, if you want to start a business, or if you want to have a, a fruitful relationship, or you want to lose weight, whatever it might be, whatever your definition of success is, it's a, everything boils down to just these two factors, information plus motivation. Information, you need to know how to do it. You need to know how to get there. And then motivation, you need to be willing to actually put in the work to get it done. So this is pretty non-controversial, right? This is pretty basic logic here. Success equals information plus motivation. Now, if you're wondering how this ties into law of attraction, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how the law of attraction affects both of these factors to success. The law of attraction affects the information that you're exposed to and affects your level of motivation. So let's go into each of these two factors in a little bit more detail. Now, information comes from two sources, and I'm actually gonna write this down for you. It comes from inside you, internal, and it comes from outside you, external. Now, let's start with external, because that's a little bit more easy to conceptualize. Information comes from books, it comes from teachers, it comes from online courses, it comes from YouTube videos like the one you're watching right now. So you get information from the outside. So the question on this part becomes, where does that information come from? Or how do you get exposed to that information? Why do you get exposed to that particular information? We know that there is an infinity of information in the world, and especially with the internet nowadays, you can get any information that you ever will want to get in life. Uh, so what determines what information you're exposed to? Now, it seems like a coincidence, right? It seems like you're just, whatever, whatever information happens to come to you is the information that comes to you. But what I would posit to you is that law of attraction has something to do with this. And it works in two ways, actually. One is, and you can, you can believe one or both of these. One of these ways is pretty scientific and the other one's a little bit more woo-woo. Um, I'll start with the more scientific way. One way is just uh, by means of your reticular activation system. What that means is that you tend to notice things when you are looking for them. When you are on a certain, uh, in a certain state, you tend to notice things that coincide with that state. And the classic example of that is that when you buy a new car, they, let's say you buy a Toyota Camry, then all of a sudden you start to notice that there are Toyota Camrys everywhere. Well, it's not that, that people all of a sudden started buying Camrys at the same time as you did, it's just that you didn't really notice before. And so if you put yourself on the state of whatever it is that you want to achieve, then you start to notice the things that are related to that. You start to notice the opportunities. You start to notice the information that's going to help you get to that. Whereas you wouldn't have even, your, your um, reticular activation system wouldn't have even bothered to look at it before because there's infinite information surrounding us at every second and we only have the attention span to take care of or to be able to recognize just a tiny percentage of that. Uh, so what you are, where your mental state is will determine which external information you choose to focus on. And then the second part of this is that, and you know, you can choose to believe this or not, is that your mental state actually attracts information to you. So the, like the old expression, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears, 
right? When your mental state is ready, when your mental state is in the worthy position to receive something, that's when the information necessary to gain that thing comes into your existence. That that's the attraction part. You're actually attracting that to you. So that's the external side of information. Now the internal side is just as important, if not more important, and that is the information that comes to you through intuition, through inspiration. This is when you have that still small voice that hints at you, that says, you should go this way rather than this way, or you should stop doing this and do this instead. This is you know, I say internal because it seems like it's coming from within yourself. Now there's, I think there's a good chance that there's actually something external that's giving that to you, uh, but it's just not visible, so it seems internal. So that's intuition, and then the other side of that is inspiration. So you have an idea for a new thing. You have a scientific discovery, like your Archimedes sitting in his bathtub, and all of a sudden you say, Eureka, you have this new scientific theory, or you're a musician, and you have a new idea for a song, or you're a poet, and you have a new idea for a poem, or you know, you're an entrepreneur, and you have a new idea for a business. This is inspiration that comes from within you. And so, Inspiration, just like, just like the external, right, the, the things that come to you, whether from an external source, like a book or a video or an online course, or internally, through inspiration, through intuition, it all kind of seems like coincidence. A lot of people never bothered to ask the question, is it really? Is it really a coincidence, or is there a way to direct this? Is there a way that I can attract good external information to me? Is there a way that I can attract inspiration and intuition that works in my best interest to me? And the law of attraction says yes. The external information that comes to you and the inspiration that comes to you are a reflection of your current state of being. That if you want good information, information that is helpful to you and is going to raise you to a better place in life, then the way to do that is to be in a good state of mind, to be feeling good. So that's the information side. Let's get into the motivation side. A lot of people have a lot of good ideas and they have a lot of good information and they have uh, maybe they found a, an online course that's going to teach them A to Z of, of how to make a lot of money or how to lose weight or how to do whatever. You know, they have all the information, but they never do anything with it. There's a lot of people who are in this situation. They do not have the motivation. So let me ask you a question. Why do you do something or not do something? Simplest possible answer. Why do you do anything? The answer is because you feel like it, or you don't do something because you don't feel like it. This is a truth that rationally minded sort of people such as myself tend to run away from. We tend to have difficulty accepting this because what this means is that success requires information plus motivation. Motivation is a feeling. In order to be successful, we must have a particular feeling. We cannot rationalize our way to success. We must feel a particular way in order to be able to do a particular thing. So let me ask you another question. Do you do better work if you're feeling good or if you're feeling bad? Do you, do, or do you feel like, are you more motivated if you are feeling happy, if you're feeling loving, if you're feeling grateful? Or do you feel more motivated if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling jealous, if you're feeling hateful, if you're feeling fearful? Which one is more motivating? And which one motivates you to do better work? Well, clearly the good emotions do. Now let me ask you another question. Do you, are you more motivated if you are envisioning something great in the future, or are you more motivated if you are envisioning something terrible? Let's say that you're starting a new business. Is it more motivating to imagine all of the great things that's going to come out of this business? Is it more motivating to imagine the new house that you're going to have, and the new car that you're going to have, and all the money you're going to be able to don donate to charity? Is that more motivating, or is it more motivating to imagine all the scenarios in which your business fails, and maybe you have to file for bankruptcy, and, and you have to tell your family and you're embarrassed? Like, which is more motivating? Obviously, the, the success scenario is more motivating. So, so this is really cut and dry. 
in my opinion, the way that motivation works with the law of attraction. If you are feeling good, if you are expecting good things in the future, you're just going to have more motivation. It's just the way the human mind works. And you know, this is something woo woo, it's something spiritual. Emotions are something spiritual. This is something that we understand very well because it's our normal daily experience. We know what it's like to be feeling good and having motivation. We also know what it's like to be feeling bad and having no motivation. But oftentimes we don't make that connection that this is something spiritual and this actually makes perfect sense according to this spiritual law of attraction. Okay, so that's the basic conceptual framework here. Now let me get into how to actually implement this. How do you switch from a reality that you exist in right now to a different world that might be completely foreign to you at the moment? How do you make that transition? I think a good place to start is the words of Jesus where he says, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. In other words, the thing that you desire the most, that's what's going to get most of your focus. And so you have to get really honest with yourself. Where is, is your treasure? What is the thing that you desire most? And this varies from moment to moment, by the way. So is the thing that you desire most something that's going to serve you, right? For a lot of people, the thing that they desire most is to feel better than somebody else. Or the thing they desire most is to get revenge on someone else. Or even for a lot of people, the thing that they desire most is that the person next to them who has more than them loses what they have, that bad things happen to that person. If that is your desire, if that is what you are putting your focus on, then it might be a good thing to recognize that and ask yourself the question, is this doing good for my life? And if the answer comes back as a no, then you can choose something else. And there are a lot of things to choose from, but you can consciously choose something that's a good treasure, a treasure that you believe is really going to do good for your life. So there are a lot of things to choose from. So your, your treasure, it might be freedom, it might be money, it might be power, it might be significance, it might be fame, it might be love. Uh, there are a lot of things to choose from. I'm not going to judge and, and say that one is better than the other. This is completely up to you. And then when you've chosen something that you believe is going to make your life better, you want to visualize yourself having that thing. You want to live in that reality that you desire to create for yourself. Even though it might not be objectively here yet, subjectively, you feel like you're already there. You visualize it, you imagine it, you imagine uh, going out on the deck of the, the new house that you want, for example, and, and feel the, the wind through your hair and um, feel a cup of coffee in your hand and you know, whatever it is, you know, try to get as specific as possible about feeling the thing that you want to achieve. And when you do this, it should feel good. It should feel really good and you should want to continue doing it. Now, if it does not feel good, then that means that there's one of two problems. Either, and this is pretty common, you're not actually focused on the thing. You're not focused on this new reality. You're focused on how your current reality is lacking compared to that desired reality. You're focused on the fact that you do not have the thing yet. And so if that's the case, you need to be able to recognize that and shift your focus towards the experience of actually having the thing. And then the second reason that this might not actually feel good is because you chose a bad goal. So if you chose that you're going to have power over people, for example, or you chose that you are going to get revenge on someone, chances are that's not going to feel so good, even if you get what you want. And so when you visualize that, it's going to feel as though you are attaining that and it's not going to feel so good. So recognize that if it's not feeling good, either you've, you've chosen the wrong thing you've chosen something that isn't ultimately going to do you any good, or you're focusing on the lack of the thing rather than on the thing. So that's one half of the process, which I will call uh, future. And then the other half of the process is the present. So you are imagining a future that is beneficial to you, a future that is the way that you would desire it to be. And then the second part is to have be be at a high vibration in the present. And, that, and so for that, you want to feel higher emotions in the present that you don't, that, that don't 
depend on something changing, that you can feel based on the current reality that exists right now. So you can feel love. You can feel love towards, towards people around you. You can feel joy. You can feel gratitude. And there's actually, there's, there's two ways to feel gratitude. Uh, one is be grateful for the things you have now, right? You, chances are, you have a lot of things that you can feel grateful for. Maybe you're not accustomed to focusing on them, but you could focus on them. You could focus on the fact that you have eyes that see and ears that hear. Focus on the fact that you have a, a safe, warm bed. Focus on the fact that you have food. And chances are there's a million other things that you can be grateful for in the moment. And then you can also be grateful for the future that is coming to you. Be grateful for the opportunities that exist in your future and all of the wonderful things that are coming to you in the future. Okay, so how do you do that exactly? How do you do that from moment to moment? Well, the way that you do it is by controlling your thoughts. That every moment you are having a thought about something and most of us just kind of let our thoughts roam free. We don't really attempt to control our thoughts very much, but thought is the beginning of everything, right? Thoughts are the beginning of words, they're the beginning of actions, and they, they deter then they're the beginning of feelings in many times, right? If you think about something that is unfavorable to you, you have a bad feeling. Uh, if you think about something that you are grateful for, then you have a good feeling. So in every moment, you want to be cognizant of what you're thinking, and you want to focus those thoughts on the things in the present that you are happy with, and the things in the future which you would like to happen. And as a result of this, you get information, right? Your reticular activating system notices the, the helpful information in your surroundings. Uh, perhaps you even attract good information to you. You also get the internal information. You get that inspiration from wherever it is that that comes from. And by the way, if you're curious about the answer to that question, read the book, The Spirits Book by Alan Kardec. It's, it's mind-blowing. And then also your intuition will be working for you. It will tell you yes or no uh, when you have a new idea, right? It, it, will, it will give you a feeling about what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, now I hope I have uh, explained the concept well enough now that you can accept it. You're, so you're nodding your head saying, okay, that makes sense. You know, I can accept this. So if you're at that point, let me give you uh, a, just a real quick four-step process that you can use to implement this on a daily basis. Now, we'll, add, we'll, we'll put... First of all, we'll put at our success metric. Uh, we'll just say percent of time feeling good, right? Because ultimately, it's our good feelings that is going to that are going to bring us the good results. And so that's a bit of a if we we watch for the good results, that's something that comes in the future. It's a bit of a lagging indicator. So it makes more sense to put our success metric as the percentage of time that we're in a good mood, that we're in a good uh, emotional spiritual state. And then the actual steps are as follows. Number one is to be aware of how you feel. Right? You need to be aware of it if you're going to be able to optimize it, obviously. Step two, and by the way, this is be aware of how you feel all the time. Be constantly aware of this. Notice when you feel good. Notice when you feel bad. And if that doesn't come easily for you, you can set a reminder. Get one of those little apps that, that dings every 15 minutes or every hour or whatever. And, and every time it dings, just check in with yourself. Say, am I in a good feeling state or am I in a bad feeling state? Am I attracting good things to me or am I attracting bad things to me? Number two is to redirect or reframe uh, present focus. What does that mean? Well, these are two separate strategies. If something negative comes into your experience, you can redirect your attention or you can reframe the, the thing. Uh, so let's say that you lose your job, for example. Um, to redirect your focus would be, instead of thinking about how you lost your job, instead of thinking about how terrible your life is gonna be because you lost your job, instead you just redirect your focus to something that feels better. So uh, focus on how supportive your wife is. Focus on what a beautiful day it is. 
uh, focus on the fact that you have skills and you have information so that you can find a great new job. You know, just redirect your attention to something that feels good instead of something that feels bad. And then reframe means to focus on the same thing but tell a different story about it. So with the lost job example, you could reframe, oh, this is a catastrophe, I lost my job, to, wow, this opens up so many new opportunities now that I lost my job. That's a reframe. So whenever you find yourself focusing on something negative, you can redirect your focus or reframe uh, the, the fact in your environment. So that's step two. Step three is redirect future focus. Now, the future hasn't occurred yet. The future is just a story you tell yourself. So you maybe tell yourself, I'm gonna be on the street and I'm gonna be starving and my family's gonna hate me. Uh, that doesn't exist. Or if you tell yourself that I'm gonna be rich and I'm gonna be abundant and everybody's gonna love me, that doesn't exist either, right? They're both basically figments of your imagination because the future does not exist. They're just stories that you tell yourself. So knowing that, knowing that they're both just stories, you can consciously choose a story that works well for you rather than a story that doesn't work well for you. And by now you should understand that if you choose a story that is positive, that is what you desire in the future, that is going to, uh, via the law of attraction, going to bring you better results than if you focus on a story that is unfavorable to you. So you redirect your future focus from the negative outcome, the negative possible outcome, to the positive possible outcome, and so you'll have much better results that way. And then finally, step four is to act on intuition. You listen to that still small voice that tells you yes or tells you no. And if you are in a good state, if you are feeling good, then when you act on that intuition, it should lead you in the right direction. So that's it. This is how to use the law of attraction to bring you from a present reality you're living in to a better reality in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I also have a free gift for you I think you might like. I'll put in the description below. It's called The Eight Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. It's just a little mini ebook. It'll take you like five or ten minutes to read. Just a little gift for you for supporting me on YouTube. And I'd very much appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button. And then if you appreciated this video, I think you'd also really like this video also.